Say tricks. With this build, you will be able to spam grenades near infinitely in add dense situations, quickly recover your grenade energy when it runs out, constantly melt the faces off your enemies in all situations via jolt because this build has jolt redundancies all over the place, and spawn orbs constantly. Does that sound good to you? Then let's build it. First up, we are running Gathering Storm for big boss damage. That's it. That's all I've got to say about the super. For our class ability, we are running Gambler's Dodge so that we can easily get our melee back anytime we dodge near an enemy. Then, we are going to pair this with Combination Blow so that we will get our dodge back instantly after getting a powered melee kill. The loop between these two abilities is the main reason I am an Arc Hunter main, and is the bread and butter in the majority of Arc Hunter builds out there. However, in our build it is not intended to hold the spotlight. We will be using this side of the build whenever we do not have a grenade at the ready. But don't worry, if you enjoy this loop as much as I do, you are still going to be punching plenty of alien faces. For our grenade, we are running Arc Bolt because of our Lucky Raspberry chest piece. Normally, this grenade will target the closest enemy within 8 meters and then chain to the next closest enemy. They can chain like this up to 3 times. Lucky Raspberry will improve this, but we will cover that when we get to the armor and weapons chapter. Now let's talk aspects. With Lethal Current, after we dodge, our melee lunge distance is increased and our next melee hit will apply Jolt along with a damaging aftershock that deals 216 damage to any enemies that are close by. Lethal Current also causes our melee hits to blind any jolted enemy. Flow State makes us amplified whenever we kill a jolted target, which with our setup is going to be damn near all the time. With Amplified, we will get a 200% boost to our class ability regeneration, plus 50 to our reload speed, and it gives us a bump in damage resistance when we are dodging. And we dodge a lot with this build, so we will get a lot of use out of this one. Our first fragment, Spark of Amplitude, grants us an orb of power on multi-kills while we are amplified. There is a 10 second cooldown between activations, but we have so many sources of orb generation that you aren't even going to notice this. Spark of Feedback boosts our melee damage by 75% for 5 seconds after we receive melee damage. This buff is consumed on hit, but we also get a nice stat bump for our resilience. Next, Spark of Beacons. While amplified, our special weapon final blows create a blinding explosion. Now we have a second source for blinding, our first source being by punching a jolted enemy via lethal current. But while our aspect will only blind the jolted target, Spark of Beacons will blind all enemies within a 6 to 8 meter range. I don't have an exact number here, but it is a decently sized area and will allow for a safe escape when surrounded or weak or enable you to pounce into the middle of a group untouched to jolt them with your ability of choice. Finally, we have Spark of Shock to make our arc grenades apply jolt, but at the cost of taking a 10 point stat hit to our discipline. I am going to take a second to confess something here. This fragment introduces a bit of jank into our build. Jolt doesn't always play nicely with our lucky raspberry chest piece. So here's the thing. Remember, earlier I said Lucky Raspberry improves our Arc Bolt grenade. Our Arc Bolt will now be able to chain up to 4 enemies instead of 3. The lucky part of Lucky Raspberry is that each chain grants an additive 25% chance to get your grenade ability back instantly. That means if we only hit 1 enemy, we have a 25% chance of getting it back. 2 is 50%, 3 75%. And if we get all four chains, it is a 100% guarantee we will get our grenade back. Circling back to our buddy Jolt being a rude dude, since Spark of Shock will now make our Arc Bolt apply Jolt, occasionally the chains from our Jolt will outpace the chains from our Arc Bolt. 
And since Jolt does not count as grenade damage, this can cause us to get less than four arc bolt chains and potentially end our spree of good luck and yank away our grenade charge. If this sounds terrible to you and you want a little bit more consistency from Lucky Raspberry, then swap this fragment for one of the following. Either Spark of Ions to spawn an Ionic Trace when killing a jolted target, or Spark of Instinct, which emits a burst of damaging arc energy that jolts targets when you are critically wounded. This one can be really fun when you are surrounded and miss a melee and then think all is lost, but right as the enemy is about to finish you off, you explode with arc energy and wipe them all out. It can really come in clutch sometimes. If you are like me and fully embrace the janky part of the build, then hold tight. I will explain what we do when we lose our grenade after we talk about our weapons and mods. Since we are running Spark of Beacons, we want to have an arc special weapon. My top choice is the Path of Least Resistance Crafted Trace Rifle. Not only is it the perfect name for a weapon to go with the build, but you can put Bolt Shot on this bad boy for yet another source of jolt. I also like having adaptive munitions on mine to help take down any non-arc shields. I decided to run a double special setup for this build. In the kinetic slot, we will run Ronhild. There are two solid options for perks. 1-2 punch with auto-loading holster to boost our melee damage even more and never have to manually reload. Or Demolitionist with subsistence. Each kill with this one will give you about 20% of your grenade energy back on each kill. And Subsistence will make sure you are always fully loaded, assuming you are getting a kill with most shots. If you do burn through the magazine, then you can swap back to your trace rifle and throw a grenade, assuming you have one, to reload the shotgun with Demolitionist. For my heavy, I opted for the Queen's Breaker bow. I chose this one because it is yet another source for blinding groups of enemies from its chaining arc damage. By being arc, it also benefits from all of our arc mods. And when it comes to damage, if you are using combat sites, you can theoretically get 669,000 damage in a boss phase, compared to Sleeper, which gets 703,000. So this puts out pretty good damage for being a linear fusion rifle that often gets passed up. If you want to swap this one out, then my second option is Legend of Acrius, which recently received Trench Barrel this season for its Catalyst, which also pairs well with the melee side of our build, and can reach a theoretical damage phase of 914,000. Although, compared to Queensbreaker, it will be a bit more challenging to reach that theoretical cap. Now for our mods. First up on our helmet, we have Arc Siphon to give an orb of power on Arc Weapon Rapid Kills. Followed by Hands On and Ashes to Assets for bonus super energy on our melee and grenade kills. Since we will be using both of these abilities quite often, we will also be getting our super often, so don't be afraid to cast it. On our arms, we have Impact Induction so that when we lose our grenade charge and switch to melee mode, we will get our grenade back even faster. We then have heavy handed and firepower to give us an orb of power on melee and grenade kills respectfully. Both mods have a one second cooldown between activations. On our chest piece, we have two copies of arc reserves to keep our main weapon, path of least resistance, and our heavy stocked up. If you take this build into higher end content, such as master lost sectors, dungeons, or raids, then swap one or both of these out for the appropriate resistance mods for the activity. We also have one charged up mod to let us have up to four stacks of armor charge. On our legs, I put one arc surge mod to make use of our armor charges and give us a 10% damage boost for our arc weapons. Then I put one absolution mod so every orb pickup gives each of our abilities a little bit of energy back. In retrospect, this is probably a bit too redundant, so you could exchange it with another Arc Surge mod to bring that damage boost up from 10% to 17%. Lastly, we have one Recuperation mod to give us 75 health on each orb pickup to help keep us alive in close quarters combat. And for our class item, we have two copies of Bomber to give us 12.5% of our grenade energy back on each use of our dodge. 
you could swap one of these for powerful attraction so anytime you are in close quarters combat every dodge you make will grab any orbs you have managed to miss around you this would theoretically make getting healed even easier but i did not test this out if i do test it out after posting this video i will update you all in the comments section but in all of my footage i was running two bombers and as always, we have our Reaper mod to give us an orb of power on our next weapon kill after dodging. This brings us to 5 total sources of orb generation, so you are going to be spitting out orbs all over the place. This season, the artifact is awesome for ARC players. We have authorized mods for ARC and melee to bring both mod types energy costs down to 1 energy each. Electric Armor makes us stay amplified longer. Thunderous Retort boosts our super damage if we cast it while critically wounded or amplified. Amped Up gives us extra damage resistance while amplified. And then Shock and All makes our arc final blows summon a burst of lightning that damages and jolts while we are amplified. Honorable mention to Lightning Strikes Twice, which is supposed to increase our grenade recharge rate after we throw a grenade. But honestly, I think this mod is broken, or the increase to our recharge rate is so small that it is barely noticeable. And being doubly honest, our build doesn't really need this one anyways, with everything else that we have going on. And that brings us to our final chapter, Ability Rotations. When entering combat, if there is a group of four or more enemies, then we are going to spam our grenades until we either run out of enemies or we lose our grenade charge. This side of the build really, really shines in high enemy dense activities such as the Ghosts of the Deep dungeon, hence the majority of my footage for the video. This grenade spam is why Lucky Raspberry has a sweet spot in my heart, but sometimes Lucky Raspberry will let us down. And when she does, that's why we have the other side of our build, the melee side. If you are in a situation with less than 4 enemies, or you just lost your grenade charge, then it is time to switch your combat style to that of Fist. Start your fight by dodging, then immediately punch the closest enemy, applying Jolt, and killing everything around you. Now rinse and repeat until everything is dead, or you get your grenade back, then feel free to start spamming those A's again. While you are utilizing the dodge melee loop, if you find yourself on the brink of death, then escape the group and start blasting them with your trace rifle, or another volt shot weapon of your choice. As you can see by the footage, with this build, you will pretty much always be amplified. You will be constantly jolting targets because all of your abilities and your main weapon apply jolt. You will likely be the largest source of orbs for your fire team because this build is an orb generating factory. And the best part is you will always have some way to engage in high octane electrified combat. If this build doesn't make you feel like a god of thunder, then I have failed, and you should definitely let me know about it in the comments. This is probably my favorite way to play my Ark Hunter. And like I said earlier, I have been an Ark Hunter main since I started playing Destiny almost a decade ago. I know that all the popular meta builds will steer you towards Liar's Handshake, Assassin's Cow, and Star Eater Scales, but I really hope that my video has given you a different perspective on Lucky Raspberry, and motivated you to step outside of the meta and live a little on the wild side. If one of your favorite exotics is also an unpopular choice, Please share what it is in the comments because I would love for an opportunity to make a build for it. I will be sharing meta builds on this channel as well, but these types of builds are my favorite. Anyways, until next time, have a good one y'all.